Welcome back to These Things Are Written on this Monday. Glad that you are joining us this Thanksgiving week as we gather together. And I know it's going to be a little bit different. I hope that you begin each day or end each day in God's Word, remembering that He is the one who has truly blessed all of us. Our text for today is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning with verse 5. So far in the first few verses, it's just been the uh, beginning, the from, the to, the greetings, and, and giving thanks to God for them. He did hint about them receiving persecutions. Let's continue now, beginning with verse 5. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes on that day to be glorified in, in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. As we look at this, Paul is talking about how, how the persecution that they are receiving, the affliction, as he calls it, is connected to judgment. It's not that they are being judged, but he says that those who are afflicting, who are persecuting them, will be judged. They will be condemned. God will repay on Judgment Day those who are persecuting those who are making life difficult for the Christians, for the believers. And God will relieve the afflictions of those who believe in him. Those who are being persecuted, God will relieve. That is heaven. The, the judgment that he's talking about, um, how he will repay them, is, is hell. And the relieving of the, the afflictions is heaven that we will experience. The punishment, he explains a little bit more in verses 8 through uh, 10. Uh, ta he talks about flaming fire, uh, eternal destruction. Those things we have a strong picture of, of what hell might be like as well, right? And then also in verse 9, this to me is a scary part. Uh, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord. You see, that's what hell is, isn't it? It's away from anything good, any kind of restraint that comes from God by his power and his care and his goodness. There will be no good. The presence of the Lord, the glory of his might will be taken away. And what is could be worse than being cast out of God's presence for all eternity, being cast away from anything good. That is the definition, really, of hell, isn't it? Heaven, on the other hand, um, we see the saints glorifying the Lord, and we see that they are there because of the faith. Uh, among all who have marveled, all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. In other words, you will be there, not because of your goodness, not because of anything like that. You will be there because of your faith, because you believe, you trust in God. You believe those things that many people see as being unbelievable. He has this in store for you the promise 
of heaven one day. He wraps up and says, this is why we pray for you, so that God may make you worthy of the calling, so that God will continue to work in you and you will continue to grow to know him more and more, and then that the name of Jesus would be glorified. That's what God desires for each of us, isn't it? He desires that that we are worthy of the calling to which we have been called, the calling of him. And God is working in us to continue to achieve that and that the name of Jesus be glorified. May that happen in each of our lives. I invite you to come back tomorrow. We will start hitting uh, more in depth on his teaching, his reminding of the Thessalonians of what he taught about the coming of the Lord. We'll see you then.